Good evening and welcome to The Problem of Being Awake and this is uh, episode 3 of the Armchair Monologues. I thought I'd do one on trans um, genderism or transmania, I'm going to probably call this title. Um, but I've, I learned a word earlier today, um, which is called, and I, I'm fed up of like the different ways they used to use the word information. I think information just, we should make a rule, leave that word alone, don't add any letters to it, because disinformation, misinformation, and now cis information. So cis information is defined as any information that's given to a trans person by a cis heteronormative person, i.e. a straight normal person. Um, that's seen as cis information and apparently it's insulting. So, in one way, I'm, uh, it, it says they only want information from themselves, their own group. That's, you only want the opinions of people who agree with you, and you only want to hear about the life experiences of people who experience life for a little bit like you do. That's not a good way to be, and it's not a good way to grow. Um, I just thought, mm, sorry, if, if what what if you need directions? You know, honestly, if if you need like directions, you are you not going to take them for somebody who's straight? Well, it, well, they like it to give you different directions. I mean, the absurdity that information from uh, non-trans people is redundant or not existing is just um un unreal it's quite it's quite hilarious really when you look at it like um you know ordering at mcdonald's well that's going to involve a bit of cis information I, I don't think they thought that one through and that would be i would say that about the last five years of transgenderism which is what i call transmania they haven't thought it through there's a brilliant video called Woke Jesus, and it starts with, it's really well acted. I've got it on my channel, for all of them, that is brilliant. Uh, it's the bad guys of Babylon B, and, and the guy, he's playing Jesus, he goes, In the beginning, there was man, woman, and gender queer. Isn't that right, Ben Boy? And then it goes on, and it sort of goes, Um... He said, my lord, I wish to be saved. What can I do? And he goes, be less white. And then uh, the commentator goes, but he was sad because he was very, very white. And then uh, Jesus says, um, people say hate is your enemy. And I say, this is correct. And here is how to find out who your enemy is by this Marxist intersectional victimhood theory chart. Um, and he says, no one comes to the Father but by lowering their carbon footprint or getting vaccinated 12 times or wearing a Ukraine pin or a human rights flag. And he just lays in and it's brilliant. He goes, yeah, omnigender, two-spirit, pangender. And then it just sort of goes into being the sort of, uh, dolphin gender, uh, roadable lazy, and he just keep, goes off and lists these really insane ones. And we have to remember that these are insane ideas. These aren't normal ideas. And the thing that most people don't know is that in 2019, the World Health Organization, which is very corrupt, uh, it's declassified transgender being having gender dysphoria, which used to affect 0.004 percent of all uh, people, uh, which now affects more than one percent of all people in the Western uh, world. Which means it can't be physically, scientifically, biologically, or psychologically. Well, psychologically, it can be explained because it would have to have been installed in them by the awful t teaching they've had, which they have, it, is, it has been horrendous. Um, but it is all nonsense, really, um, beyond the actual gender dysphoria, which is a real thing. And, and the sad thing is that uh, lots of trans people who fought for trans rights and really, you know, just wanted to be of the opposite sex, 
um, and they, they would make the decisions as adults because that was the, the only way they could legally do it. And, you know, there was much more satisfaction with it than there is in now with lots of people being detransitioners and feeling they were being conned out of puberty and all sorts. But it really is um, kind of, yeah, gender dysphoria. You, you might feel like you're a woman in a man's body and you might feel that really intensely. And that affects at its highest estimate 0.004%. I could go down to 0.0041%. It's the lowest estimate I've heard, but let's just go with the highest. There is no explanation for the rise in percentages other than it's fashionable. It's installed by gender theory and trans story hour being injected into schools and it becomes a trend and luckily the next generation have bucked at that trend they've gone that's that's nuts that's totally nuts uh we're gonna we're gonna be conservative and, and normal and that's the rebellion now and it's great to see that at least that's happening but if we think of these these genders beyond man and woman we start to think what the hell are you talking about pan a pan gender um omni gender um y you know two spirited um it's all it's all made up i've read the initial 100 and i can tell you 85 percent of them say the same thing which is then they've got male nor female they're somewhere in between and many of them quote ancient civilizations that used to have people like that who were not male or female but of another gender altogether and they were always revered and there's but they're and like ancient aborigines but there's no evidence to back that up no anthropologist has ever found any it's just them saying that and picking weird places in the world to say where it was happening um now, transmania is a direct result of the declassification of the mental health disorder because a mental health disorder needs to be declassified in its interpretation by other people. Um, I have PTSD. Um, I've had it for 20 years or more and, um, I manage it perfectly now. I really, you know, I don't notice it at all, but I still have it. It's still a mental health disorder. Um, and there are laws and, and controls around people who have these things. And to say you're psychotic, because, uh, you know, I ended up being a psychologist and work with lots of people. And let's say you're psychotic, you know, that has to be noted down legally. You have that mental health disorder. And, and sometimes there's legal medications you have to be on. Um, but that's the mental health side. But with gender dysphoria, again, you know, before this, 35 years of research showed that basically when everybody went through the process of therapy and uh, going through the idea of the trans surgery and the change in the process, 85% or more consistently stay in the same body and almost exclusively enter same-sex relationships. So they were gay. And the other 15 tend to transition and have the life that they wanted. I'm not saying that this is 100%. I don't uh, know how people felt, but that's a general consensus that when those people who made those decisions, and Blair White's a wonderful example, um, you know, she's a really admirable trans woman. Um, but, you know, these people who made these decisions when they were really informed about what they wanted and they felt it entirely, you know, those are the people with genuine gender dysphoria. And it's anyone who is in the transmania group type thing and really feels that they're in the wrong body they need different professional and personal help from their family and from physicians and clinicians to discuss everything because you won't get the help through being a pan gender or omni gender or demi boy girl or demi boy kin or whatever it is it's just insane no, that's just making up things about your identity as you go along. You have micro and then xeno um, pronouns. Xeno are pronouns that are so fiercely held, they can't be uttered by anything that can make a sound. That's the definition of them. So but they want you to call them nothing, but in a very profound, profound way to them. You're like, what's this all about? Why is this nothing? nothing? 
job talking to me about something so ridiculous. Um, and somebody mentioned there could be billions of genders. We, we're just, we're so excited, we're just touching the surface. There could be billions. Well, there's only 8 billion people. I, I don't think we need, I don't, you know, you can have ideas. And this is a thing I think Gen Z don't get. You can have ideas and you can even act some of them out without making permanent decisions. Because you look like a fool when you make a decision that then you later, re well, if you later regret it, you get sympathy if you go down that route. But if you, you know, make a decision based on a, a trend or a fad or something like that, and you're just swallowing around and suddenly you change your mind. Like Sam Smith's a great example. He's changed from queer to Oh God! Like he's he's been through three or four different identities publicly. If he hadn't announced them publicly, he could have been through three or four different identity ideas in his head. Which is what I mean. We don't all have that kind of identity ideas, but we all have ideas, and we all have thoughts we wish we didn't have, and some that we're ashamed of, and we have thoughts that we like, and thoughts that make us feel good. Um, but. <laughs> There's this kind of immediate need for attention in this new, young, sort of under 30, trans mania, um, kind of, you know, we have a, a pronouns are, uh, uh, there's a new, uh, I, need, I need neo pronouns because none of the pronouns that exist fit me out of the ni now on like 90,000 different types that there are. So I need to make up my own. So I can be garage and garages. That that fits with my identity. It's madness. It really is. When you when you look at it and you look at what they say, and if you watch any videos with trans activists in them, you'll hear garbage that coming out of their mouth that you just think, What? I'm sorry. I mean, it's okay for the really progressive, but for the rest of it, it's not. It's not something we enjoy it's not something we like to hear about and it's not something we want for our kids our nieces our nephews our grandchildren it's just not something we want in schools it needs to be removed from schools completely any type of i mean at the moment schools have books available to people of 10 years old 11 years old that actually qualifies hardcore pornography. I'll, I'll just say there is a book available. And it's, in, it's in England. I know it's in England and America that shows a picture of a blowjob. Now, 20 years ago, no, no publication would legally be allowed to do that. And I don't, I actually don't think any publication still is legally allowed to do that, except in the name of getting people to accept queerness and gender identity as something to be challenged and changed on a regular basis and there's no need and the, the irreparable damage and if you google before and after bambi witch who won the irish woman who won the eurovision song contest two years before you look at her and, you, and she was an adorable schoolgirl, and then you look at her screaming we're queer and we're here. And she's screaming and you look at what she's done to her face. She's had things stapled into her face. It's awful. And it seems to be a relentless, it's a relentless oppression Olympics, victimhood cycle mentality of always trying to outdo and out, out, out flamboyant, but not emotionally and not conversationally. So, you know, you almost, people feel for you every time you make one of these new changes so you get a buzz from that so you make more it's become a kind of addiction for some people and the idea that you're not a gender and that you you know it, and the babies now are being born with no gender uh, that's happened on on a few occasions i don't think that's happened in any mainstream way but it's happened and there's definitely laws to make it okay that the, the gender can be left until the, the child decides it. Um, and I saw a woman once and she was, um, she, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm, I'm 90% sure she's a woman. A lot of the comments were asking that same question, but she lives in a non-binary free adult child bearing house. 
she is the mother and she says unfortunately um my daughter was born uh, as a as a girl uh but she, I, she recently identified as nine she's no, she's she's five and she recently identified as non-binary which is really pleasing she, she, she's in, identified as that because that's what you identify as she doesn't think that five-year-olds seven-year-olds ten-year-olds 14-year-olds don't have developed brains your your brain develops all the way till the age 35 but past 21 it slows down development but it still develops but anything under 18 is still really sponge-like and, and and open to all sorts of things i mean it's almost like the cult of scientology if it had been mainstreamed and propagated because it is a, a cult mentality it's the lgbt and the woke community is supposed to be a community of complete tolerance and yet in reality they're a group that is tolerant only of its members and that's not tolerance that's not fair they're only tolerant of their members and if their members now happen to be jewish they're not tolerant of them that's sad last pride month there was a number of jews who weren't allowed to participate and blair white a transsexual who's trying to interview people was kicked out of places by security staff so they're tolerant tolerant of their own group except for jews when will they make another decision about which part of their own group they're less tolerant of um they're not tolerant of police they're not tolerant of adults they have this thing called adultism which is anyone who believes they know more because they're older is automatically wrong and their advice is useless which is absurd considering that's how we've learned and developed and grown throughout life we wouldn't be here if we hadn't done all that that's the vital thing about growing up is watching others do things trying them yourselves learning making mistakes getting advice sometimes taking it sometimes not developing getting relationships friendships real life face to face outdoors you know real actual connections and and building your own identity based on all of your cumulative experiences um all of your you know experiences that have shaped who you are throughout the years and you know it used to be with kind of trends like being a goth or being a skinhead or you know these were just trendy fashion things that we would try on and i had you know a long ponytail um for six years you know and then I, one day i just realized i looked like an absolute idiot with it and and my personality this was in in my 20s and you know i'm not anywhere near the same person in my 40s that i was in my 30s let alone my 20s and certainly let alone my teens so my team could not make anything like a kind of a cr critically thought through uh realism that, and and bringing realism to everything in life they, they wouldn't be able to make the decisions that i'm now capable of making so age and wisdom and the the beauty of falling down and getting back up again the beauty of of being able to rise when struck down and the more times you do it the stronger you become and the more you learn about yourself and your actual identity your actual character and that's a word we just don't use haven't as much anymore people's character that was kind of that was the martin luther king message was judge people by the character not their skin color and you know skin color is simply skin pigmentation in relation to your ancestry and its movement from the equator that's the only thing that defines skin color that's it everyone was black once in africa and the human race was almost made extinct because of racism because of warring tribes we ended up with thirteen thousand humans when we left africa some didn't leave but some did and over time they moved north east west everything else and skin pigmentation started to change and that's all that's about 
you know, you can talk about white supremacy and white privilege all you want, but you've got to be careful who you point your finger out because you want to know more about somebody's life before you accuse them of being unconsciously racist and having white privilege. I could denounce that argument to any black person in the world who believes that because there's not one person I, I know who knows me well enough who would say that I've le had any level of privilege in my life. I've had to claw for everything I've ever had. And I've had a lot taken away from me by serious problems, like actual sadists doing a horrible thing to me that really took away a large chunk of my um, potential, my future, uh, my life expectancy. And I don't sit around blaming that well i mean i blame them of course for what they did it was a horrible attack it was attempted murder and they thought they'd succeeded but i it's not i i have to take responsibility for what i do now otherwise i'm just living in a blame game a victimhood triangle a you know, victim perp perpetrator rescuer alternating between different ones at different times the, the victimhood mentality doesn't work in any utility for the human being and the development of the self and the self-reliance and the self-belief, the self-respect and the self-indulgence to go through life in a way that you enjoy and gives you a sense of meaning and purpose and direction in any way you see fit to be happy, healthy and live your life without the intervention of other people. But in order to do, do that, you can't invade your personal life and how you feel about yourself into, into the world or into other people's lives without permission, without a social agreement and without a friendship. You can't just, you know, because you're trans, you're not, you don't have more than equal rights and that they are, they are the first group to ask for more than equal rights. And the idea of trans women playing in men's sports, trans men, sorry, trans women, but men playing in women's sports is, is barbaric. And uh, Caitlyn Jenner even came out and said that today. And she, she as Bruce Jenner, when she, so I'll call her she because fair play to her. Um, she came out and says, Bruce Lee unfair. She said, men have 20% extra bone density. No, for something like, but she kept like percentages, high percentages. And she's like, they hit balls 20% harder. They punch 40% harder. You know, and there was that horrible boxer who was beaten in the Olympics by a trans man, woman, man, a, gen, a, a living human male. So I think with his penis and everything like that. Um, she, he, he, beat her so badly she quit after 40 odd seconds so she couldn't take it she'd never been hit like that and he went on to win gold so the women's world championship boxer is a man and i'm gonna leave this chat there this transmania needs to stop and i think that sums it up the female olympic boxing champion is now a male, a biological male, is the female boxing champion of the world. We need to reverse this. We need to remove it from schools and start to remove it from culture and be prepared for some pushback from the people who have it. And maybe there's room for them to change and normalize for some and for some, maybe it's going to be more difficult. But the change needs to happen now. The world is right for it. The majority of people reject the ideas of transgenderism. I'm one of them, and I've always made this case that it is just such a bad thing because it involves other mental health disorders, autism, depression, and anxiety all go together with this taught gender dysphoria to make people malleable towards the idea of queer and gender queer, and they're moving into various direct directions they otherwise wouldn't have done. Um, it, Depression and anxiety is not new. Um, you know, the, the suicidality rate for people with gender dysphoria is only marginally higher than the average a teenager. And any doctor who's ever told a parent that the child is likely to commit suicide if not given gender affirming care is directly lying to that parent and that child because the 
absolute absolute statistical fact is that the highest point of suicidality in trans individuals is two years after successful surgery and that surgery is only successful 50 percent of the time and it comes with complications that can kill and certainly side effects will last for life and it is now becoming experimental child butchery and in the trans mania needs to stop we opened Pandora's box, or they, the, what, the corrupt World Health Organization opened Pandora's box. We need to close it. So I'll leave it there. It's been great having this long form conversation with you. This is a new thing I'm trying out. If you, I'd love your comments as to how you think about the delivery, the more relaxed form of conversation where I'm allowed to think and talk rather than trying to push a point forward fast and quickly and talking to people with longer attention spans so please do leave comments please do subscribe and like if you do feel that you like it and you want to subscribe uh, it's good youtube stuff for me it doesn't really make me any money but you know it's all it's all good and i like doing it and it helps helps me get my more psychological approach out on some of these issues and um it's always a pleasure to make these so you be lucky, I'll be good, and I'll catch you on the next one, and we'll see what my next conversation is going to be about.